Hey guys, and uh, welcome to my first personal YouTube video, and the first in a long series that I'm going to be making about teaching Java through Bucket. I noticed there's a lot of Java tutorials out there, and there's a lot of Bucket tutorials out there. I know those already exist, but I haven't found one that teaches them at the same time, because Java is a programming language, and Bucket is just a collection of methods and stuff that, that you use Java for. Um, so I noticed there's a lot of people that just want to code plugins. They don't want to do any of the other aspects of Java, like making actual executable programs or anything like that. They don't want to go into all that. They just want to make some simple plugins for their server. So I think the easiest way to do that is to actually go and teach Java, but teach it through Bucket so that you can have an understanding of what you're doing because just watching a video on how to make a a sign change or spawn a chest, you know, you're going to know how to do that, but you're not going to actually understand what you're doing. So if, if if that's fine for you, there's a lot of good tutorials. The um, I learned from the BC Bros after I had learned Java. Um, so there's a lot of good tutorials out there. But if you're looking for something where you can learn Java and Bucket at the same time, then you've come to the right place. So. I'm going to start from the very, very beginning, so if you are ahead, if you know a little bit of Java already, then feel free to skip a few videos ahead, um, but we're going to start at the very beginning. First, we need to go download Eclipse, which is, it's, it's an IDE, which is an integrated development environment. It's, um, it's a program that you write programs with. It'll find errors for you, and it makes it very easy to export the code and get it into a jar. It's Eclipse is one of my favorites. There's also NetBeans, uh, there's JGrasp, but you can use any one you want. I prefer Eclipse. So go to Google, type in Eclipse download. Go to the first one. We're going to download Eclipse IDE for e, um, EE stands for Enterprise Edition. It's just uh, has a few more features. I figure why not. If you don't know what your computer is, if it's 32 or 64 bit, go to computer, right click, um, right click on computer, click properties, and then it'll tell you right there. So mine's 64, so click that. I would recommend clicking the one from, um, I believe it's Eclipse Source, is the is the best one. Yep, and then go to IDE for EE developers. Click whichever one you want. I'm 64. Let it download. I'm not going to download all of it because it's a fairly big and I'm running out of space on this computer. But after it downloads, assuming that you're using Google Chrome, you want to right click it, go to show in folder, and then it'll bring it up wherever it's at. You want to right click it in the actual folder. Let's just go to something. So I think I've, I've already downloaded it somewhere. So for example, it's going to download as a zip package. Now you need to unzip it um, so that it'll work. So you right click it, hit extract all, just click extract, it'll put it in the same folder that it downloaded to. And then instead of saying um, Eclipse, EE, Kepler, la, 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 dot zip, it'll just be a regular folder. Open that, find the actual program, it'll look like this, the, uh, the icon will look like this. If this would help, let me see if I can open up the actual folder. It's going to look like this. Eclipse, JEE, Kepler R, Win32, blah, blah, blah. And then click that, go into Eclipse folder, then it's right there. Open it up. Get out of this. <coughs> All right. Oh, we're already. Oops. So I have it so that it automatically opens up my workspace. But when the window pops up and it asks you which workspace you want to use, um, th your workspace is just the folder that all of your code is going to be saved to. So it um, defaults to um, it creates a new folder called workspace. So you can use that, or you can make your own. It doesn't really matter. Um, I would recommend clicking the button that says you, um, 
use this as my default so when you click Eclipse and open it up you pop right in and you're ready to go so what you want to do first is right click go to new and yours is just gonna say project so you want to click project go to Java project click next name it for this we're gonna name it YouTube practice hit finish it's gonna ask you if you want to open up the Java perspective all that means is that um, there's different window settings in Java like there's a debug window setting that looks like that there's a Java one so it's asking you if you want to open up this one which you do because you're going to be doing Java so you have this it's going to have an, a source folder SRC stands for source you're going to want to right click this folder go to new package a package is just a it's a it's a way of organizing your code all that a package is is a collection of folders or one folder if you want so when you're doing a plugin general um, package naming conventions is like an email but it's in reverse so for me it would be com dot gmail dot apple juice so personally I usually do me dot apple juice dot and then the, the I do the plugin name or the name of the um, of the actual project which would be YouTube practice finish now I want to show you guys something real quick that um, I'm not sure if you will know or not when I said that the uh, the package is just a collection of folders what this actually means let me show you an example Go to workspace so here's here's my workspace this has all the folders where I save all, all the code here's our project that we just made YouTube practice now watch we go into here in our source folder if you'll notice we named it me.applejuice.youtubepractice here's me dot apple juice dot YouTube practice so all that putting that dot there means is it creates a subfolder so I could have me dot John and it would and then inside this me folder there would be apple juice and there would be a new folder named John so just so you guys know that's what a package actually is now inside the package we're going to create a new class Java is create is um, made of classes a class is just it's basically a blueprint for what you want um, your object to look like we're gonna get into all that later so don't worry about it if you don't understand that yet so just okay class the name of the class for um, this purpose we'll name it um, we're gonna name it turtles because I like turtles I don't know so we're gonna here's our class now at, if you'll notice the top is the package name since you have your fi your um, class file inside of a package you have to give it this name or you have to tell it that it's in the package so we have our class turtles we have our open brackets so uh, for this tutorial because I want to wrap this up this is only an introduction I'm gonna go over basic variables so in Java a variable is something that holds data so there's six um, I'm sorry I'm blanking on the name here we go oh they're called um, primitive data types which is basically the um, there are types of variables types of variables that are reserved to Java so if you notice when you type it out it turns that like darkish red color there's int there actually I'm going to go in order there's float there's double and then there's byte short int long now a float the ones that you're going to be using most are double and int a float is just um, a number that has decimals to it um, a float is half as big as a double in um, because uh, when you create a variable inside all of the fancy computer architecture memory crap it assigns 32 bits which is a bit is a binary digit which means um, ones and zeros so it's a, it assigns a 32 bit size part of the memory to this this variable that's float so a double is a 64 bit so that means it's 32 ones and zeros it can use to represent so basically if you're going to use a really 
big number, um, like a, about say 400 billion point six seven four seven three eight nine seven two. You would want to use a double. If you're going to use a small floating point number, which is the floating point means that it's you know has a lot of uh, a lot of decimals to it, then you're going to want to use a float. I, uh, to be honest, I wouldn't worry about it. I don't use floats that much. I just want you guys to know it because as you're coding with uh, Bucket, um, you're going to see it a lot. You're going to see the word float, or you'll see a variable or um, a number that has 50F, that means float, or 50L, which means long. So now we can get into these. A byte, short, int, and long are all types of single, um, not single, they're they have no decimals to them. A byte is 8 bits and like I said before that means it reserves 8 parts of memory to it so a byte is like it can go up to uh, 126 so 0 and 126 can be a byte so we so a 6 would be a byte um, uh, short is 16 16 bits and int is 32 bits and a long it's a long ass number would be 64 bits So, to be honest, the one that you're going to be using the most is int, just because int sounds like integer, which just seems to make more sense, because you don't have to worry about memory management and all that crap and making sure stuff is to the exact um, memory slot that it should be, and you, fuck, you gotta worry about that stuff. So, we're gonna do, we're gonna use ints and doubles are the, are the ones that we're gonna use. So, when you're making a variable, you have the name of the variable, you have, or I'm sorry, you have the type of variable first, then you have the name of it, the name can be whatever you want, so we'll have an int name soup. And now you have an equal sign, and then whatever you want it to be equal. And notice how there's a semicolon at the end. So, right now we have an integer named soup with the value of 60. So if I want to say, um, if I make another one named chicken and five, if I wanted to do soup plus chicken, as you can guess, it would equal 65 because it's the value of soup and the value of chicken is 65. Okay. There's also, uh, let's say we had a double um, potatoes. I must be hungry because these are all food names. Uh, potatoes and it's four point that. Now, if you notice, if I tried to, if I went to an int and I tried to add a decimal to it, it's going to give me an error, and it's going to say you can't convert from because this is a double to an integer. So, got to keep it keep it all in line. So basically, uh, long story short. If you're using a number without decimals, use an integer. If you're using a really big number, like a number that's bigger than, uh, I believe it's 2 billion, 300 million or so is the limit for an integer. So if you're using something like 400 billion, you would need to use a long, because it's a long ass number. That's how I remember it. So a uh, long, my long ass number is equal to that. Actually, I think that's even too long for a long, yeah. <laughs> So don't use uh, whatever this number is. It's too big. People don't like numbers that big. Unless it's how much money you have, then you like it. So that is the uh, primitive data types. That means those are data types that are reserved to Java. They are set in the, the core Java code, and it belongs to it. The second kind of data that you can have is um, data that is made of an, it's an object. For example, the, one of the most popular ones is a string. And if you've done any kind of programming, you've heard of a string before. A string is just a collection of characters, and that's something else I should explain. There's this, there's a um, a seventh primitive data. It's sort of a data type. It's a character. A character is equal to one letter. So a character could be an A. A character could be a four. Chat, not chat. It can be whatever you want. It's just during the error because I have my string. And now I deleted my brackets. So the reason I say this is because when we get into strings, 
So for example, um, we have a string named my string, and this is the the equal sign. It's this is very important. One equal sign is an assignment operator. That means it's assigning a value to. It's assigning what? <coughs> excuse me. It's assigning whatever value you put here. So let's say um, turtle soup and chicken. It's good stuff. Turtle soup and chicken. This is the value, and you're giving it to my string. That this is what the equal sign means. You're assigning it to my string. So a string is a collection of characters. The, the string <coughs> is a class that somebody wrote that makes it really easy to group characters together, like a like a big sentence or a paragraph, group of sentences, whatever. So some, somewhere in the Java code, there's a public class string that does a bunch of different stuff that you're making an object out of. Every time you make a string, you're making an object. So uh, we'll get into objects later and what they do and all that. That's, that's a few episodes down. So that is basically it for, for variables. There's, um, there's the primitive data types in and double there's strings which are collection of characters like because um, when you have a string you can um, when you're doing bucket you're going to be doing a lot of string editing like if someone sends a message like let's say somebody um, player sends a message and they um, they type yo dude what's up this in your code when you get this message that they send it's gonna come it's gonna come into you as a string like that so when you get that you can do whatever you want with it so you can chop off the word up and you can make it yo dude what's and that's it you can make it like that and it's um, it really helps when you're doing all that if you understand that a string is just a big long collection of characters and spaces is a character too just that's a helpful tip and that's about it for variables. So um, something that I think I'm going to do for all these tutorials that I'm making um, is, I don't know if it'll help you guys or not, feel free to do it or just ignore me, I don't care. I'm going to give you like a, I don't know, homework or a, a few examples that I'll give you the answers to in the next video to make sure that you understand it. This is going to be a very simple one, but um, I want you to make an integer named Cool Beans that's equal to 46 and I want you to make a uh, string that's named poop and poop is uh, the value of poop or whatever is stinky that's the that's the thing in quotes is stinky so next video I'm gonna go over methods and we're gonna get into some more bucket stuff we're gonna start getting into the actual stuff that you guys wanna wanna learn um, I hope this got. I hope this was helpful for you guys. I'm doing this because there's way too many people that want to code bucket and can't, or they don't want to have to go into um, too much Java stuff. Actually, I kind of did today, so I'll make sure I keep it shorter in the future. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for the next one. Thank you.